Uh, additional law enforcement is at Monterey Trail High School in Elk Grove right now after a student was attacked Wednesday afternoon. Uh, the issue was the 15-year-old student uh, ha has been arrested in this case, accused of attempted homicide. The victim's father actually uh, returned to the school today to get some answers. ABC 10's Devin Truby spoke with the dad before we went to meet with the school. Devin, what did you find out today? That's right, Walt. The father, Kwame Curry, returning to the school today to discuss the handling of the situation, that he was notified by students that his son was attacked before the school and that the school originally said his son was having breathing problems and passed out nothing about the attack. The victim's father, Kwame Curry, on campus this morning to discuss what he's saying is the school's mishandling of an assault on his 15-year-old son. Them saying that it was just, you know, like a, a medical thing, and then all of a sudden, you know, it's, oh, your son was assaulted, and, and then the video comes out, and then everybody wants to be uh, so concerned and act like they handled so much stuff, you know what I mean? And the video clearly shows, you know, what happened, you know, if... If uh, the video went in the surface the way that it did, then they would have probably just, you know, swept it under the rug. Curry told us he has done everything in his power to keep it together for his family after watching a video of the attack. Of looking at that video, you can tell he has he has no sense of consequence, no sense of nothing. You you could have literally taken taken my son's life. All over tennis shoes. That's what led up to the assault when a 15 year old student walked up to his son in the cafeteria from behind, pulled this fire extinguisher from his bag, wound up and took a full swing. The fire extinguisher hitting the back of Kwame Curry Jr's head, him falling to the ground. We've seen the video, but are choosing not to show it now due to the graphic nature. He's hurting. My other son, my 18 year old son, had to literally take his phone in and delete so much stuff off of social media um, and from it, uh, from accounts just so he doesn't see it and have to relive this situation over and over and over and over again. Mr. Curry saying everything that's happened, he only hopes his parenting is strong enough to get them through. To hear my son say that he never wants to come back to this school ever again. It, it hurts. It hurts. We reached out to the school district to learn about this meeting and to talk about the grievances that the father has. The representative was in a meeting. We're told they'll get back to us. And we want to talk about that police presence that was here earlier in the morning. At least five to six Sacramento County Sheriff cars were here. Honestly, Walt, it seemed a little intimidating to have young students have to walk through five police cars, but the presence was here as promised. Yes, yeah, Sacramento County Sheriff's deputies are, are handling this. Devin, thank you. It is, it is, uh, most of what's happened here has been disturbing. Again, the 15-year-old is in custody. Two felony counts of attempted homicide without bail. The investigation is ongoing. Um, we wanted, we, we've been talking about this all morning long, and Dr. Angela Drake joins us now. Um, we've had meetings about this, Dr. Drake, and I know you saw the video of, of what, it, we're not showing the video. I saw the video. I've been doing news for a long time. It disturbed me uh, when I saw how graphic it was. Okay, you're here. You've seen the video as well. Um, what, what can we say about something like this, but specifically about teens' mental health now? What do teens need? These are two 15-year-olds. What can be done here? Well, I think, I think the thing that I want to emphasize is that we always rush in with a security safety issue, which is, of course, really important to the parents, and really look at it from a law enforcement perspective. And what I want to kind of argue as a mental health professional is that we need to really pay attention to what's going on with teens for the past three years, right? So we know that there's been a huge increase in the number of adolescents, teens, and, and children even presenting to the emergency room mm -hmm. for mental health concerns. Um, we know that uh, there's a lot of disconnectedness and they haven't been in school, they haven't been around their peers, they're adjusting to going back to school. So we need to kind of remember that there's a mental health aspect to mm -hmm. this. What can, what can be done 
uh, you, the, that's right. the problem. What, what would you suggest can help with kids like at Monterey Trail High School or any high school around that they're dealing with the stressors of being cooped up in COVID and, and all of this? Well, one of the things we know is that uh, social connectedness, connecting to the school, is really important to teens and youth. Mm -hmm. So really supporting that, getting kids back into their routines. And one of the things that we need to really address is look at maybe a ratio of security officers to mental health uh, providers in the school. Do, does the school have counselors? Do they have enough counselors? Do they have a psychologist? Because one of the things we know is that kids are still adjusting going back to school. You make, you make a good point, doctor, and, and you're suggesting some, some potential solutions here. And it seems like we talk about these things and then tomorrow's another day and nothing ever, well, I don't want to say nothing, but the, it doesn't happen that way. So what's the reality here? Quickly, well, I'm well, sorry, we're yeah. almost out of time. No, no, the bottom line for me is that parents will often say there weren't any signs that their child was going to engage in whatever behavior. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Usually there are signs. Okay. So, so if we want to get down to the nitty gritty, we're going to really have to encourage parents, okay. caregivers to watch for signs and okay. get kids in for treatment. Okay, Dr. Angela Drake, we thank you, clinical psychologist. I think we're going to be seeing you in some of our later newscasts today. We appreciate you coming in.